to continue our study on this on the biography of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That is um, particularly we are referring to a book uh, Rahik al Maktum, and uh, uh, we like to continue from where we stopped in the last class. Um, that is uh, regarding the uh, topic. Uh, we already completed um, about the pre-Islamic period. Uh, um, now we are going to discuss about the starting from the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which means we already completed the first chapter. Um, now we are going to the second chapter. If you can see your, in your book, uh, Rahik al Maktoum, the English version, in page, I think, page 56, right? The see next up, page 56. Uh, we, tada. So if you see page 56, uh, it will start with the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So which means in the previous class, we already discussed about uh, his father, right? Huh? His father, uh, how uh, Abdul Muttalib uh, treating Abdul, uh, Abdullah, Abdullah he's, uh, he's the father of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, uh, now we will go to the about the, uh, his father, very little information we have about his father, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, 56, page 56. Okay, page 56 start with Muhammad's birth and 40 years prior to, to the prophethood. Okay, he start with the birth. If you can see here in the slides here, so I already summarized all the topics. I all have the material with you. As you can see here, Muhammad's birth and the 40 years priority to the prophethood, Qabla uh, Ahdin Nubuwa. As we know that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been uh, uh, selected by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala as a prophet and honored that prophethood at the age of 50. Uh, sorry, at the age of 40, right? So what happened before that period? Uh, so here, if you can see here. Uh, in the Rahik al Maktoum, it already highlighted several points here, starting from the birth. So let us look uh, this uh, this birth. When we want to talk about the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I think all of you know when he born, right? When Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam born? Huh? It's stated here. Everything is stated here. Just read this, these few slides. Uh, if you can see here. Ninth of Rabi al Awal. Of course, there is some dispute among the scholars whether he really born on ninth right? Rabi al Awal or twelfth. So there is a dispute. Okay. So, but the exact date is nine, but very well known on the twelfth. So, uh, and of course, uh, when we are talking about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before we talk about the pre-Islamic period, the Jahiliya period, of course, many of the information uh, may be not not that uh, clear to us maybe not that true unless if it is stated in the in the Quran because nobody was concerned about the uh, history of the before the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam only after the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and particularly after the prophethood uh, the people uh, focus on the biography of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so they need to find out information of the pre uh, the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before uh, 40 uh, before the 40 years okay so and that also quite ambiguous but anyhow scholars try to do their best to compile the correct information um, the more normally the most correct information we can found only in the kutub of hadith okay this is very important because in islamic legacy in islamic tradition you have uh, 
books of uh, Maghazi or what you call it battle, uh, battle, uh, uh, battle of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and also uh, the Mufassirun, uh, the Fuqaha, and the Muhaddisun. Normally, the information provided by the Muhaddisun are more reliable than the historian or Muarrikhun. We call it Muarrikhun. So that's why we need to be very careful. So in uh, previous classes, we highlighted uh, about the pre-Islamic period, right? So most of the information, we are not sure whether it is true or not. Unless some information which we cited from the Quran. Okay, that is for clear because it's mentioned in the Quran. And yet that also mentioned in, in a very general way. Uh, for example, we already mentioned about the Ashabul Khudud, Ashabul Fil, and uh, how the Abraham attacked the Kaaba and so on. Those things are uh, the main issue is clear. But the detail, nobody knows because there is no information. But after the birth of the Prophet, then we, we, can, uh, we can search and we can uh, investigate whether the information is true or not. So again, keep in mind, throughout we are reading this book and focusing on the issues. So if the information comes from the muhaddisun, so then that um, we, you, we cannot confirm 100% correct. Lah, but 90% above can be correct. And that also depends on the, what type of version we have. I think all of you studied about the hadith, right? You're studying about the hadith? Or not? Huh? Stop. Stop already. You should have the class. Yeah. Stop. If you want to study the biography of the Prophet, we cannot read, uh, get rid of the hadith. Uh, uh, start change the date to, from Saturday to Thursday. Uh -huh. uh, which you start? Morning. Which you start? Uh, then it means the class is on. Yeah. Uh, okay. 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 So as long as this, uh, because sirah and hadith is interrelated. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, but uh, anyhow, we just accept the one more, more uh, known. The most known among the scholars is the Rabi al Awal. Okay, but it not as I told you already, right? Nobody knows when exactly that happened. But the dispute, uh, particularly information about the historical information, normally we have a lot of dispute. Uh, particularly when you are reading about the Sira ibn Ishaq, Muhammad ibn Ishaq, you know, he is an historian. Yes. I'm quite skeptical because uh, we have been taught that uh, the birth of Nabi Muhammad so, and the night of Nabi Muhammad uh -huh. for many, many years, you know. Uh -huh. But why recently there is a dispute? Oh. Uh, why? <laughs> the question is why now it's a dispute because why? Because everybody wants to know about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They want to know the, the truth. In the past, in the past there was no such kind of uh, things that took place. Now only people are trying to learn, right? In the past we don't have such kind of things. Last time people just accept whatever the Ustaz said. Yeah, whatever the Ustaz said. Ah, now Alhamdulillah. Now we don't, we, last time we don't have this kind of classes. Now why we have? Because a kind of awareness that, uh, that uh, what is that, the people, that people's awareness want to know about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Many things. Why, for example, now we, you, you can, the same question you can uh, ask, why now we are saying about all this Tahlil, Kirat, Yasin, all this one on for Thursday, yeah. is the, why? Because now people want to know. In the past, people just follow the the Sheikh, the Ustaz, whatever Ustaz said, whether yeah. wrong or not. That's what? the point I'm going to say. Ah. Because, <laughs> because now, uh. a lot of people, a lot of uh, uh, Ustaz, uh. they study uh, in uh, Middle East. Middle East. Uh. Then they bring all sorts of uh, information, all these things. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Because they study. Uh, when you study, then you know. 
when we don't study we just blindly follow the people yeah, yeah. how how many sect we have in islam right the groups uh, uh, sh for example shia khawarij mu'tazila and so on so so everyone have their own uh, that's why when you want to study about the sira as well as the hadith and the other literature in islam we must know the, 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 what happened after the death of the Prophet ﷺ. After the death of the Prophet ﷺ, Abu Bakr uh, became a caliph, right? And then after that, Umar ibn Khattab, and then after that, Uthman ibn Affan. So the turning point is here when Uthman ibn Affan became caliph. Many things happened in, history, in the history of Islam. The split among the Muslims. Before there was no split, right? Uh, before there was no fighting among the Muslims. United. Even though there was some problem, but they were united. But after the Osman ibn Affan, a lot of uh, fitna that happened during those days. Uh, and uh, the Muslims uh, split into many groups and then they are fighting among themselves. So, so, it is, uh, uh, so, this, so that's why we need to find out the most truth uh, information, the most genuine or the most... Uh, uh, what is that? Um, uh, close to the truth. Okay. So uh, again about the months, about the but the, the one is most clear. The year is clear. The year of the what? If you can find that, the year of the elephant event, Ashabul Field. That is clear. But the months, the day, the day, little bit not. Huh? Yeah, yeah, that also another thing. Uh, that is, we don't know. But according to the history, uh, they said 571 AD, right? But it, it also, we don't know whether it is uh, tr truly, really happened on that day or not. Okay, and then they said Monday morning. And he is, of course, from the uh, lineage of the Bani Hashim. That we already discussed in the last class, right? Uh, from the Bani Hashim, then come Abdul Muttalib, then uh, Abdullah, uh, then the, uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that is, uh, many of you already know about that one. Next we go to the, uh, this, what is that? This babyhood. Uh, the second point highlighted in your book is about the babyhood. What it means babyhood? It means how Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lived during his childhood. Okay? So... If you, I think all of you already read, right? The, 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 the pages. Huh? Mm. Okay. Here there are some, something we need to highlight here. You see here in page uh, 57, um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was later instructed to Halima ibn Abi bint Abi Zuaib from Bani Sa'ad ibn Bakr, her husband was al Haris ibn Abdul Uzza called Abi Kabsha from the same tribe. Okay, uh, and so on. Um, so, but I'm not going to read all those things because that is uh, already known to us. You see here, Halima binti Abu, Abu what? Abu Suaib? from Bani Sa'ad. She was the, the what? Who breastfed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? Uh, Ummur Rada'ah, we call it Ummur Rada'ah. And then, uh, uh, then we have uh, Suhaibah and also Halima as Sa'diyah who uh, breastfed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then during this period, um, which means during the childhood before the year of five, Four, three, two, one. Many things happen. So there's the thing. Few miracles happened to Halima and the whole household while baby Muhammad with her. So all those information is stated in your, in your, in the in the pages. You can read that. I think some of you already know that, right? Uh, can uh, can some of you say whatever you know about that? Uh, for example, you see. In, in the last paragraph, he said, uh, she said, she, 
Uh, it was a year of drought and famine, uh, and we had nothing to eat. And then the risk, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bring, because the present of the, present of the what? Of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa with her. Uh, the camel provide uh, milk, a lot of milk, and uh, the, anim the, the, what, the animals also uh, many during those days. Okay, do you have any question on that one? During the, some of the miracles that happened when the Prophet ﷺ uh, was with her. Before we go to the most important event that happened uh, during that time. Huh? You see in the next page, that is in um, page 58, uh, here she means, they mention about that, one of the miracles that happened. Huh? I think all of you know about that one, right? How the, um, the chest of the Prophet ﷺ was opened. You all remember that one? Huh? Uh, it is uh, uh, this, this narration authenticated because it is mentioned in the book of Hadith that is the Sahih Muslim. If you can see here in the Sahih Muslim, and uh, I've cited all the Hadith here, but I cannot see here in this book. All of you know about any incident, right? Can you describe? Huh? Ah, yeah. It is not an like operation. It is just uh, a kind of uh, what do you say? I also don't know what do you said. <laughs> huh? Yeah, operation without using any. Open heart surgery. Yeah. Huh? Take what? Blood clot? Uh, he extracted the blood clot out and he said it's part of Satan in him. And then he washed it with the water of Ramzan in the gold vessel. Mm -hmm. How to? The voice of the premier came running to his mother. His mother said, Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been murdered. Someone rushed towards him and found him all right, but his face was white. Mm -hmm. How to get the next uh, other file here? I have another file here. Okay, here. Okay, before we go further, I think there is another important thing, you know, about the father and the mother. What do you know about the father and the mother? Because the father already passed away before the, before the birth of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so here there is a big question here. How to get this one, Sheikh? To, to yeah, no, I mean the, this folder. Huh? This is another folder. Folder. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, ni ni ga. Folder. No, no, ni, na. Now, play it, guys. Oh, another folder. Ah. Uh, this one. Ah. I got computer. Ne. Ne, ne, this one. Ne. This one, this one. Ne. Ah. Satu folder. Ada dua sekarang. I want to use both folder. Ah, ne. How to get this one? Yeah. This one. Okay. Ni ke? Let me see. Ni pakai, boleh pakai? Tak boleh. Let me see. Ah, okay. Oh. Ada dah. Ada. <laughs> okay. So, I asked you just now a question. Where is that? Because this is a very common question they ask. Where, uh, what is the religion of Abdullah and Amina? 
whether if they are infidel, they are mushrik and mushrika, where are their places? To the hell or to Jannah? Huh? Allah Allah. Follow the religion of Abdul Muttalib. What is the religion of Abdul Muttalib? He also another mushrik. Idol worshippers. If you, do you remember when we discuss about the idol worshipper, how come to the to the Makkah, right? Which means all those people live during that period are idol worshippers, right? And particularly when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, can you see this narration? I have cited several hadiths which is not found in that book, okay? But it is good to highlight because normally people ask about this kind of question. Where the place of uh, Amina, where the place of uh, Abdullah, if they are fathers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where they are supposed to be, okay? So let us look this one. The hadith regarding the fate of the parents of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There was two hadiths. At least two hadiths, the one I found, and both hadiths are authentic hadiths, you see. The one narrated by uh, Anas ibn Malik, that a man asked, O oh, Messenger of Allah, where is my father? So he's in fear. He asked about his father, where he'll be placed during, uh, in, the, in the hereafter. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, in hell. Because he's mushrik, right? So maybe the man feel very sad and he turn away from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called him once again. Say what? When he turned away, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called him back and said, my father and your father are in hell. And this hadith, nobody cannot reject because it's an authentic hadith. Yes, that is the problem. Huh? Which one you want to... How you want to defend this and that? Okay? This is about the father. Father is clear. From this hadith, it's clear. If we are taking a Sahih Muslim as an evidence, so nobody cannot reject, right? And clear. This is Sarih in Arabic, you call it. Okay? Then there is another narration. Okay? Abu Hurairah narrated the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I sought permission to beg forgiveness for my mother. So it means, he is asking forgiveness. Like Ibrahim Alaihi Wasallam asked forgiveness for his father, right? Then what was the response of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to him? No, you don't ask forgiveness for your father because he is a mushrik. He is an idol worshipper. But, Allah did not grant it to me. This hadith Sahih Muslim also, which means Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not allowed to ask for uh, uh, what is that forgiven for the forgiveness for the mother, for his own mother, right? Huh? Wait, wait. Let, let us finish this one. I sought permission from Allah to visit, to visit. Yes, He had give her grave. Allah granted it to me, Sahih Muslim. Ah, so, what do you want to say now? During that time, huh? uh, Islam was not being practiced. Who said? Who said it was not practiced? I'm asking you. Ah, you're asking me. <laughs> <laughs> now, can you, can, you see, can you put ourselves today, uh -huh. okay, compared to that, those days? The, the timing. Right? Yes, the timing, oh. which we mentioned last time, right? Okay. Are the Muslims now practicing Islam? <laughs> Are they among the Muslim uh, idol worshippers now? The idol worship maybe take in different form. Now, right? Right, right or not? Yes. Uh, so, and yet there are uh, genuine Muslim, right? Okay. Those are worshipping Allah. So I can imagine in that manner. Which means during those days, they might be, most of them are infidels. But maybe there are some people who are still practicing the teaching of Ibrahim Alayhi Salam. Right? Okay. Okay. Now, I got a question there. Ah. If the message is not being passed on to the parents, ah. uh -huh. the prophet's parents, yeah. how can they? Yeah, that's, that's the thing. We, we don't know. We, we don't have any information. We have this narration. This narration really created problem. Yes. Okay? Because many scholars, many scholars, scholars, they, they think, oh, how come mother and yes. the parent of Prophet yes. can put in the hellfire? Yes. Right. Yes. But the narration clearly shows that. How you want to defend? 
You want to accept this narration or you want to reject? If you reject, it means you are rejecting the other hadith as well. Because it is in Sahih Muslim. Ah, okay. Ah. Why not? Why not? Why not? My question. Uh. They they can dispute uh, the birth of a nabi. Uh. Why did they dispute that uh, his father is going to hell? Whose father? Same, same. They dispute both. They dispute. Yes, father and mother. Uh. Okay. Okay, never mind. Whatever you answer, <laughs> we we just look this answer. I simply brought this issue because you may you may think that kind of thing. I also in the past was thinking like that. But when we found this everyone. Ah, uh, shot. Okay. Now let us look. Let us look here. Okay, you already got something to say. Just like you know, unlike the most just huh? Allah will know the best. For this, you know, it's very clear. We are more, we are more, you know, we are looking on this narration. Mm. We are based, we are talking based on this narration. Yeah. Uh, Many so times, is it fair for us to be doing that? Okay. You know? Uh, okay. Yeah, maybe he's being said like that. Because Prophet said something like that. Okay. You know, I will start this for you, but Allah did not tell me. Uh. But Allah let me visit. That was a statement that was wrong, you know, that I'm saying. Yes. But when it comes to whatever it's going to be uh. for the parents, uh. for me, I do not. How about Ibrahim alayhi salam, his yes. father? Uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam is being said clearly in Al Quran. Yeah. Uh, the same thing is uh, here. This hadith, based on the hadith. Yeah, but that one is in the Quran. <laughs> let's, say, uh, let's, let's, no look, let's look into Prophet Nuh and his son. Uh. Yeah. He asked Allah, he said, this is his son, and this is his son, and inshallah, he want to ask for forgiveness or something. But Allah said, his son, you know, is being cast by shaitan. And the Quran. So, you all have the view that Prophet Salaam's parents will enter paradise. Allah, everyone's soul is owned by Allah. Huh? Sister? Allah, so Allah sister, has sister is saying something. Yes, sister Shima. Uh, no, today, uh, no, 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 no. I, I, I like what you said, Mr. Kalimah. Are you seeking for the truth? Okay. Or from the Okay. Now, all along, we have been taught that they, they, have, they go to heaven. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I got no doubt about it. Yes. And uh, even, can you imagine, even the Prophet uh, Islam was fighting for the uh, to make uh, Abu Talib uh, as a faithful because Abu Talib was sacrificed everything. Yeah. Right? His uh, soul, his uh, energy, his time, his um, wealth, everything for the sake of Prophet Islam. Yeah. He, he got the message. Huh. That's a totally different scenario. Oh, mashallah. <laughs> so, from what I, I have seen, because he's being told by Prophet Muhammad, uh. you know, this is the actual religion. You know, we have to follow. Okay. But on the parent side, like I said, Allah will love Islam. Okay. That's uh, your view. Good view. Okay. Let, let us see what the people, scholar said. There are, yes, you want to say something? Huh? I think Allah knows best. 
Allah know best. Okay, that's a good answer. Okay, okay. Let let us look here. Okay, as the mother of the Prophet Sallallahu being in hell because of what is said in the Quran. Okay, this is supported by the Quranic verses. Okay, where in um, this is the verse Surah number nine, verse one hundred thirteen. Yeah? It is not for the Prophet and those who have believed to ask forgiveness for the polytheist. This is the du'a of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Exactly is the case, right? Even if they were relatives, after it has become clear to them that they are companions of the hellfire. Ashabun nar. Ah, because they don't know. Okay, that, just keep. This is supporting evidences for the, for the hadith. If the Prophet's mother was a believer in, and in paradise, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam would have been granted permission to pray for forgiveness for her. Because Allah... Okay. <laughs> Christians. No. In Mecca is no Christian. They were Christian, but not that much. This is we are talking about the Quraysh. The Quraysh were infidels, right? And how the the worshiping of idols come into that? We already highlighted that like earlier. Okay, now see. And then another support for the hadith, the ayah Quran, which said that every everyone is responsible for their own action. Wala taziru wa ziratun wizra ukhra. I think you memorized Quran already. That is uh, stated in verse 30, uh, Surah 35, verse number 18. Uh, it is very important for everyone to remember that each person is ultimately responsible for their own action. Allah said in the Quran, that is the verse. No soul burdened with sin will bear the burden of another. Wala taziru wa ziratu wizra ukhra. The one that uh, recite in Quran, uh, is it refer to uh, Nabi Muhammad? No, 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 no. It's refer to general. In so general. So general. So. Uh, so that is. But they are supporting this ayah, these two ayah. To the hadith of the Prophet, the, the one we read just now. Okay, now look, another, another uh, response. On the day of judgment, we must take full ownership of all of our deeds. So that is the uh, understanding of from the words we read just now. Both our good deeds or our, our sins, right? Uh, we cannot have anyone else take responsibility or blame for our sin, not even our parents or our children. No one, right? No one can claim our good deeds as their own. This applies to everyone, even our family members. No matter how much we may want to help our uh, help out our loved ones regarding their fate, we cannot. Okay. So Allah is the ultimate judge and will judge us solely on what we ourselves did. Okay. Now, families of the prophets are not exempt from judgment. Regardless of whoever they are, can be proper family, can be son, can be their wife. Like you have a wife of the uh, Lut and uh, Noh, right? Uh, and son of Noh also. Even the family of the prophets are not exempt from this. Simply being related or, uh, or close to a prophet does not mean that a person is by default a believer. Can we say that? Because Prophet Sallallahu bring the message of Islam and mother also should be Muslim. Right? And the father also Muslim? No, because they were in that kind of situation. Uh, or can, can be a, a default in a believer or a good person or destined for paradise. So that is clear. Lah. If a relative of a prophet doesn't believe in Allah or does evil deeds, they will be punished in the hereafter and their familial connection to the prophet will not be of any help to them right so that is the thing next allah specifically mentions that this is the case for the wives of the prophet no and the prophet lord uh, that is stated clearly in verse uh, surah 66 verse number 10 uh, Allah sets forth an example for the disbelievers, the wife of the Noh, 
and the wife of the Lut. Each was married to one of our righteous servants, yet betrayed them. So their husbands were of no benefit to them against Allah whatsoever. Both were told, enter the fire. Qila dukhul nara. Qila dukhul. What is the verse? Ha. Darab Allah mathalal lilladina kafar umra'atan nuhin wa umra'atan lut. Kanata tahta abdaini salihaini min ibadina. Ha. Ha. I also forgot to read that one. Wah. وضرب الله مثلا للذين كفروا امرأة نوح وامرأة لوط كانتا تحت عبدين من عبادنا صالحين فخانتاهما فلم يغنيا عنهما من الله شيئا وقيل دخل النار مع الداخلين. So that is the end of the fire along with the others. Okay. So it means does not matter whether. And again Abu Lahab. Abu Lahab, the uncle of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, was also condemned to hell in the surah, the most known surah, Tabat Yada Abi Lahab bin Watab. He's relative, right? This illustrates the extent of Allah's justice. It would be very unfair to grant people paradise just because they are related to a prophet, regardless of their actions in love, in life. Okay. Next. Uh, now, and this is the, all your answer just now. What your answer just now is uh, uh, in this category, okay? To make it uh, normal, to make it uh, neutral. What is that? Having faith in Allah's mercy, even though the parents of our prophets are infidel, but we don't know since we don't know the real situation. So that's why we can say it like this. But all of this does not mean that we can totally sure that the prophet's parents are doomed. Can we sure? Allah promises we never punish until we have sent a messenger. Right? He said in the Quran, Surah 17, Surah Al Isra, verse number 15. Allah said that one, right? After the Ismail Al Islam, there was no prophet. Right, but still they can argue now. Now our our situation now. Where is the prophet? <laughs> our situation now we have Quran and Hadith. They also have the teaching of the prophet Ibrahim and Ismail. Same. They already distorted. The one idols brought by Luhai ibn uh, Amr ibn Luhai, but still there were some people practicing, right? Uh, so. There was no prophet. Even, even after the death of the Ismail alayhi salam, how many years to the time of Amr ibn Luhai? Hundreds of years, right? So where there was no prophet, all of them are considered as a Muslim or not Muslim? <coughs> ah, I don't know. Allah wa alam. But this is the answer given, okay? Because mercy of Allah is so, uh, okay. This means that if a person is not aware of the message of Islam, are they not aware of Islam? Those people, mother and father of the parents of the Prophet Maybe not. Maybe not, right? Because it's already... Huh? Yes. So, what if I know about what a Muslim if he did not worship the other idols apart from Allah? Right? Yeah. Did Waraka worship idols? We don't know, right? We don't know, right? Yeah, that means he follows the Injil, that he knows the coming of Rasulullah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's possible, lah. So we we but um, if if so, that's why the answer will be if they are worth following the teaching of the Ibrahim or Isa and so on, so they are safe, lah, right? But if the Islam the uh, the message of the Prophet Ibrahim and Ismail and so on 
uh, didn't reach them, so they also safe, I think, right? <laughs> so the third category uh, are these parents of the Prophet Sallallahu in the third category or first category or second? Nobody knows, right? Uh, so, so that's why the answer may be like, th like this. Uh, although the most people in pre-Islamic area were pagan, okay, there were people there that believed in Allah, yes. Jew and Christian, and also including Waraka bin Nawfal, and uh, maybe Abu Bakar and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also, because Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not, of course, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was protected by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? But Abu Bakar, Abu Bakar also same, he he didn't worship any idols. So maybe they are included in this category. So Jew and Christian and general monotheists. It is possible that the parents of the Prophet Wasallam were believers in Allah. Possible. Okay. Since they died before the advent of Islam, they were not able to accept or reject Islam. So Allah would therefore not punish them. You agree with this one? <laughs> Sympathy lah. Sympathy and empathy. Okay? Allah alam. Ultimately, Allah is the final judge and Allah will decide who will be in paradise or hell. We can only believe, do good deeds and have faith in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then leave it the rest to the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody knows. Even we also, we don't know. When what? Oh. It should be in the later stage because most of the hadith in the later stage in Medina, during Medina, maybe during Makkah time there was no such kind of uh, uh, because Prophet Sallallahu was focusing on the on the iman. Okay, so Allah alam. Yeah, that is good idea also. So what we can know if it is said by Prophet Sallallahu during the early stage of Islam, what what is you can conclude? Could there be uh, uh, Which means uh, in the early period there was no mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. In the later period there was mercy, or like that, or what? Maybe it can be because of like what what Sishima was trying to say. What I believe is. Then after that, all the uh, Quran was revealed in, to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and one of the quotes which is from the uh, uh, story of Prophet Abraham uh. so using that Rasulullah said, but if it's too early one It's just like the hadith that when uh, the women were prohibited from going to the, uh, to the cemetery but afterwards uh. they, they are allowed No, I don't think so no. Yeah. Okay, so that is the uh, a kind of, at least you already have some answer for that, right? So we hope, even though there was hadith like that, so, but the real situation, we don't know. But the big problem is when you say, no, they will go to the paradise, what is the, where is the evidence? There is no such kind of evidence showing those who starts, oh, those uh, scholars who are pro uh, defending the the status of parents of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they will go to the paradise. What is the evidence? At least these people, those who are saying no, they have the evidences. Uh, so that is the problem. Okay, we cannot just uh, we just cannot just use our mind to interpret all these things, right? If we we say to the parents of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the same thing we have to say to the other peop other people, the relatives of other prophets. Right? Sure? Right or not? Yep. You're thinking? You have any, anything, <laughs> any doubt on that? I will say Allah Alam. You will say Allah Alam. I was just saying Allah Alam. Because we don't want to take the anything. <laughs> huh? <laughs> okay, now. The, the other issue during the childhood. Of course, this article, in, this is in Malay. Another issue. Another issue. Ah, another issue. What is that issue? Because in, your, in, the, in the book it's mentioned very uh, briefly, right? 
uh, that circumcised. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who circumcised in the book mentioned? Abdul Muttalib, right? Uh, but is it really uh, Abdul Muttalib circumcised or what? There are some people who 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 saying not. Why? Because how come this is pro even though during the childhood of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is uh, protected from people. People, uh, uh, what is that? Cannot see the, the 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 private part of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is the argument. Okay. So, uh, based on that, there are three view on that issue. Okay. Um, uh, what are those view? Based on this hadith. And Anas, qala qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Min karamati inni wulitu makhtunan Walam yara ahadun sawati What it means? Huh? Among the things that uh, What? Admired me Is that uh, I was born uh, In in uh, Circumcised Already Circumcised Makhtun Makhtun already Okay so, and nobody look into my private part. This is the statement of the Prophet ﷺ. How do you think about this hadith? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so all the three versions, there are three uh, hadiths on this one. Everything is weak, weak hadith. Okay, weak. Who? The one who uh, uh -huh. Ah, okay. So you already know that hadith. No, they have spoken about it. It's supposed to. Ah, supposed to. Okay. Okay, so uh, the comment uh, below is about this hadith lah. All this week hadith. Eh? Then there is another hadith on that. Uh, uh, that is. Uh, not only the circumcised, but also this um, the apa bagi tali pusat lah. Tali pusat also already not there, which means some miracles that happened. Huh? Ah, uh, uh, yeah, that also he don't have. Okay, so this hadis also is daif, huh? daif. So all that hadis, another hadis. عن عبد المطلب أن عبد المطلب خاتن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يوم سابع. so this narration you have in your book. this is the second view that say that it was circumcised by the عبد المطلب. عبد المطلب on the on the seventh day seventh day of the birth. this can be true. yeah this can be true because why? because the practice of Ibrahim عليه السلام during the time, of course, they were so they were so circumcised. Okay, in the first, uh, in the page fifty-seven, and then he not only like we are doing nowadays, right? After in, during the circumcised day and the seventh day akika, we do akika, walima, and so on, right? So this the same thing was practiced by the Abdul Muttalib. Maybe this is true. Okay. But this hadith also, uh, there it, it is weak also. And in brief, all narration related to the circumcision of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are weak. All, none of the narration is authentic. So what we can conclude, okay? Uh, okay, the, there is the other other hadith narration that the Jibril. He circumcised. I guess okay, so Jibril. How circumcised during the time of uh, the operation? Huh? Heart, heart operation? Huh? Who cannot see? Oh, Jibril. You cannot see Jibril. The angel. Yeah, we cannot see. Definitely we cannot see. How you can see Jibril? Yeah, he can come in the form of man. <coughs> yes. Uh-huh. 
Okay. Huh? Yeah. Yes. Ah, how true is that? We'll come to that point. Uh, we, we have some, several narration. Is it true or not true? Okay. We will do. We will uh, look into that. Inshallah. Okay. So this narration also not, not authentic. And then the other narration is that um and the Jibril Khatana Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Hina Taha Tahara Qalbahu. So this is the angel Jibril. But uh, okay. Those this this uh, uh, answer for those who are saying that he were he was born uh, circumcised. So if he was born circumcised, they feel that is uh, is not not good sign, not good sign for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is a kind of, uh, huh? Yeah. Like for example, when you when you when uh, any child born with no no what, no leg, no eyes, no ears, it means chachat, nah? right? They, it's considered as a kind of disabled. So how come a prophet a prophet can be born in that manner? So that is the argument. Huh? You see here, uh, uh, Ibn Sayyad, it's, which is related by the uh, Ummu Salama. Inna Sayyad waladat ummahu a'war, makhtunan, masruran. It means one of the, this Ibn Sayyad, huh? Ibn Sayyad, uh, a Jew, uh, they thought that he is a Dajjal Because why? He born, he was born A'war A'war means one has only one eye So, which means It's a, a kind of a sh Shortage in the, in, the, in the birth of that person Ibn Sayyad Makhtunan huh? And he also circumcised And also the What is that? The the code of the, what do you call it? What's that? Umbaikot. Umbaikot. It's cut off already. So it means a kind of uh, 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 in, the, in the human being. Okay? It means he's not perfect. And similarly, there is another, another story about another person. This is Ibn Sayyad. Okay? There is another person, similarly, that is... Um, uh, uh, one of the king of the Roman uh, who born uh, Makhtun also. Okay? Makhtun means uh, the circumcised already. And uh, people were cursing, particularly this Amra al Qais. Amra al Qais is a, a sha'ira, a poet. Uh, she was cursing uh, because of that, uh, that thing in, in this king. Okay? It means uh, not a good sign. Lah. Okay? Okay, so that is about the two issue. Now let us go back to the other issue. Uh, that is the Rahikil Makhtum. Okay. Uh, now, the one you asked just now, the question you asked about the uh, cleaning the heart, open surgery, right? Mm, open surgery. So, by the open surgery, oh, I have a hyperlink, but I cannot see the hyperlink here. Okay, uh, it is uh, narrated, this is a Sahih Hadith eh, in Sahih Muslim. Okay. Anas ibn Malik reported that Jibril came to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam while he was playing with his playmates. He took hold of him and lay him prostrate on the ground and tore open his breast and took out the heart from it and then extracted a blood clot out of it and said, that was the part of Satan in you. And then he washed it with the, with the water of Zamzam in a golden basin 
and then it was joined together and restored to its place. The boys came running to his mother, um, Halima Asadia, and said, Verily, Muhammad has been murdered. They all rushed towards him and found him all right. His color was changed. Anna said, I myself saw the marks of needle, needle on his breast. Hadith Muslim. So it is Sahih Hadith. And this happened not only one time. It, this one happened when his age is five years old. It happened also several times. And particularly before he go to before, before he go to Isra Mi'raj, when Prophet is already quite uh, big. Uh, for, uh, there was many narration. And, uh, uh, but the most uh, known, uh, he was uh, open his heart for four times. Four times. Uh, but there was another time, five times, but that is not that, that uh, authentic. Uh, so four times is um, almost confirmed. So even two times is already a lot, right? Open the heart twice. Normal human being can open the heart how many times? Ah, and I say, but you have that answer. <laughs> now we are talking about human technology. So. Uh, yeah, if Allah can give it to human that kind of technology, so Allah is uh, more capable to doing all those kind of things. Okay, so uh, let us move to other slide. Uh, so when this happened, actually, actually, when we said that many miracles happened when he was. He, he was uh, with uh, Halima Saadia, right? So, and she don't want to, she don't want to give uh, back the, the Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to her, uh, to his, uh, uh, to uh, Amina, because she loved him so much. But after this thing happened, she got, scared. She's got she got scared. So, she want to return to the Halima, uh, sorry, to Amina. Okay, so that's the thing happened in the following slides. Back to his passionate mother, and uh, Halima returned him back to his mother. Amina decided to visit. Okay, this is another thing. Uh, when uh, Halima, uh, sorry, when Halima Saadia returned the baby, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Amina, so she wanted to visit the. His, her, her husband, where he died? Yasri, yes, Medina, right? So, so she visited um, uh, Medina uh, to the graveyard of the, her husband uh, together with Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, and then after that, she come back. She come back to Medina. Okay, so how many of them went to uh, Medina? Uh -huh. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And then Abdul Muttalib Okay So on the way return from Medina After visiting that She fell uh, sick up In a place called Abwa Abwa is uh, I don't know how many miles But it is um, Close to Makkah I think uh, So uh, she passed away there in in Abwa. Okay, another question here. How many siblings from Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? You see, this is uh, another important thing we need to uh, think about. How many siblings? Huh? Ah, oh, you see, no child at all. No, no sibling at all. He born, he's alone, right? And then before the birth, he already, uh, his father already died. And when he is about six, seven years old like that, her, his, her, his mother already died. So nobody, no sibling. <laughs> so the grandfather take over, right? Uh, Subhanallah. Then we, we look, Ajib. So, uh, and the, Abdullah died in the, what age? Uh, his father. 
Very young. Less than 25. Which means maybe you already married before that age already, right? And Amina, what is the age when she got married? <laughs> for permission. So as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided uh, such kind of things to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, so whatever it is, now Amina, uh, from Amina, the baby, uh, what is that? Uh, the care of Abdul Muttalib, the, the grandfather of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, now let us look here. Grandfather, you can see, right? Back to his grandfather, compassionate grandfather, and then so when after the Abu'a, from the Abu'a, grandfather brought him back to Makkah. And he also, as we already know from the history, he was very love for him and taking care of uh, uh, wholeheartedly the Prophet. Okay, then after some time, he also passed away already. Huh? It is mentioned here, passed away in Makkah when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was eight years, two months. Eight years, two months. Okay, just about, about after one or two years uh, under his care and he already died also. Then after that, who took over? Is Abu? Abu Talib. Abu Talib took uh, caring of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he is the one who taking care for how many years do you think more than it's about how many years if he die he take care of Prophet Sallallahu when he's eight years old and uh, uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received the prophethood in the age of 40 all right and then which means uh, another few more years <coughs> after that almost 40 years 40 years he was taking care of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam okay Okay. Um, then he give all kind of uh, support and so there is another narration here. Ibn Asakir reported on the authority of uh, Jalhamah bin Arfuta. Makkah was desolated. Abu Talib when went to Kaaba with a young boy to pray and immediately a miracle happened. What is that miracle happened? Ah, because the people was complaining, the Quraysh, the, the, the people of the Makkah was complaining about the rain, no rain, this, 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 right? And then he took uh, Abu uh, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, uh, when he were placed, or both of them were in the, in the, what, in the, in the Kaaba, than the rain for that is also another another big miracle that happened to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay. And then uh, then after some time Abu Talib took him to where? Took him to to Sham. 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 Sham means Syria. Syria, yeah, Syria. Okay, but on the way, he met a, a monk. What we call him as a what? This Bahira, the case of Bahira. Huh? You, huh? Have you heard about this Bahira? A monk. Bahira the monk, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was only 12 years at that, at that time. Okay, so this, when we look into the Old Testament and New Testament, we will come across a lot of information about the Bahira, you know, Bahira, where he uh, was telling to the, uh, he already, he already know about the coming of this Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, one thing that uh, those people uh, who were living in uh, northern part of, uh, uh, northern part of what? Northern part of uh, Hijaz, which means Shams, they they come down uh, to the closer to Medina, uh, uh, the Jew and the Christian, they settle down there for uh, in order to uh, wait for the coming of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They already know from their book, okay. Uh, particularly this Bahira was, uh, of course, this narration in in stated in some of the Hadith book, but. None of the narration is authentic lah. Uh, mentioned about the 
the father of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who will be die before his birth, uh, and uh, this child will come to Syria and so on. He already know about that that kind of information in that particular uh, collection of hadith. But none of them is correct information. The one most correct information is that that uh, there will be a prophet uh, will send by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that region and he has uh, what his name is mentioned in the in his shoulder, the Khatam and Nabi'in. What do you call it as uh, Ahmad? So that clearly mentioned in in the in uh, both the Old Testament and the New Testament. So that was cited by Bahira and he told uh, he told Abu Talib about this one. Uh, when he saw about the child is coming uh, to that place, to that place. Um, what is the name of the place mentioned there? Huh? Yeah, that name of the place. Huh? Huh? Ah. Hawrat. Hawrat. In the vicinity of Hawrat. Ah, yeah. Yeah. He made more for Bahira. Yeah. So. His real name of Georges. Hmm. Okay, so that is the. Um, and uh, he asked many, some question. Uh, from the what is that um, Abu Talib and he responded um, all the questions he asked then he told him to bring back uh, bring back what bring back this baby or this boy to Makkah because he was afraid of the the reaction of the Jew because the Jew already know they was waiting for this Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam right but they thought that this Muhammad will come from their their people, which means Bani Israel. Why are they scared? Why are they did that? <laughs> Why I also don't know. Why they the fear of the Jew? The Jew, because they don't like someone come from other other the tribe. Right. That is the only reason. Because if if the prophet, last prophet, the final seal of all prophet come from Bani Israel, they will be very happy. But because he come from different uh, tribe, that is the Arabs, uh, so they dislike. That is the justification given by the scholars. Uh, or maybe also, yeah, that is a good question. Why? Why they need to be? Because they don't like all the prophets, including the prophets of their yeah, prophet. their own prophets. They don't like also, right? As mentioned in the Quran, many places, yaktulun al ambiya. Okay. Uh, Okay, so that is the, some of the miracles that happened and Bahira uh, requests Abu Talib to return the, babe, the, the boy to Makkah. And uh, here it says we have got to learn this from our books. Uh, so books are referring to... To this book, lah, the Old Test New Testament, the Injil. The Injil. The Injil, uh, the Injil yeah. Uh, yeah. And even the Quran also mentioned in Surah Saf. Uh, وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيْسَ بْنُ مَرْيَمَ وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيْسَ بْنُ مَرْيَمَ وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيْسَ بْنُ مَرْيَمَ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيَّ مِنَ التَّوْرَاتِ وَمُبَشِّرًا وَمُبَشِّرًا Give glad tidings مُبَشِّرًا وَمُبَشِّرًا وَمُبَشِّرًا What is that? مُبَشِّرًا مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيَّ مِنَ التَّوْرَاتِ وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ Glad tiding with a prophet, a rasul, messenger. His name is Ahmad. Smu Ahmad. Okay? So, when it was informed by this monk that the Jew, he is afraid of the Jew, maybe they will attack Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So then he already returned. Then he continued his journey. Uh, there is a, uh, uh, with whom he returned back to Makkah. So there is also uh, some, some news on that. Uh, but he returned. Okay. Uh, huh? No, but Abu Talib, he went with the caravan. 
the 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 tribe that the was sent back. Yeah, he was sent back to Mecca. Uh, you see here, um, uh, Muhammad was twelve years old when went to Syria with Abu Talib for a business. Okay, then reached to Busra, met a monk called Bahira, Busra. Okay, the name of the place is Busra. Please them with kindness. Okay, recognize Prophet taking his hand and said that this is the master of all humans. Rahmatan lil alamin. You already know already about that. What is happening? Asked about Abu Talib to bring Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam back to Makkah because of the because the only reason is that the Jews. Uh, okay. Any question until that? I can recognize him also by the seal of prophethood, which is below his shoulder, like an apple. Yeah. Which means the seal is there, like a chop. So I fall from time to time. Huh? I fall. Yeah. But the the problem we don't have uh, the the picture the image of that seal you know uh, we don't know who said to you who 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 take the picture who take the picture so no 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 cannot we cannot say how it looks nobody knows swollen uh, I don't know. I, uh, nobody knows. I didn't read anywhere about that, the detail of that one. Uh, even Salman, uh, Salman Al Farisi also looked. Some, there, was, there was some uh, uh, Sahaba uh, wash that uh, seal, you know, in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but never described to us how it looks. Does it look black? Does it look uh, swollen? Or how? Does it look the, you know, like the. Uh, the, uh, the like the cow, you know. Sometimes they put the with the fire or like that. Uh, uh, we don't know. Yes. But it is like when you have the mark, the mark here referring to what faith was. Christian. Christian mark. Ah, uh, Christian mark. Otherwise, he will not say about the Jew, because the Christian are very close to Muslims compared to the Jew, right? Okay, so now uh, we turn to the other issue, is, which means uh, another important thing also mentioned. There was a, a kind of battle that happened between these Arabs during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ibn Maktoum put it in a sacrilegious, sacrilegious war, which means a war that is continuously happened uh, from, you know, the tribal war between them. Okay, uh, so... Uh, very briefly here, Muhammad was 15 years old only, which means after about three years he returned from the from the Bahira's place, Busra. Uh, the war happens, a chaos condition for a few years. Uh, you see, during the this war, also Prophet Sallallahu didn't take any part. He didn't. He go, but he didn't fight with the people. Uh, Allah protected him from doing this that kind of things. So he was just um, uh, giving the uh, what is that? Uh, he engaged in some other activities during that battle. Okay, uh, so uh, but after some time, you see, Harb ibn Amaya used to be the leader of the Quraysh and their allies. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam included himself in the in the war, but never raised his arm against the opponents. Okay, okay. So after. Outcome of this war, there was a kind of confederacy, a kind of, uh, what do you call it, a treaty, uh, a kind of treaty. So that treaty is uh, Al-Fudail, Al-Fudail confederacy. That happened after the war, the war which we mentioned just now, and then the need of forming confederacy at Makkah, representative of Banu Hashim, 
Banu Abdul Muttalib, Asad bin Abdul Uzza, Zahra bin Kilab, and Taim bin Murra called to meet, and then Abdullah bin Ja'dan at Taimi to enter a confederacy that would provide the the needed. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had been honored with the ministry of prophethood, witnessed this leak and commented on it. So at this at this time, what is the age of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Huh? What is the age of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at the time? It's almost forty already, right? Or not yet? Okay, any question on that? Huh? No, not yet. Uh, not yet. He married when his age is 20? 25. Okay. So after that uh, treaty between the Arabs, uh, uh, then some other things happen. So here now the Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam already uh, very adult already, right? It means his age was already 25, 24 like that. So no particular job. He he don't have his jobless. <laughs> no particular job at the early but reported works as a shepherd for Bani Sa'd in Mecca. So he was taking care of the the goats, no? shepherd. No? Age 50, 25, he went to Syria as a merchant for Khadija. But before that, he was a merchant also for someone else. right? But for the Khadija, when he was 25 years, so he uh, went to Syria. Then, after that, you already know the stories, right? Khadija was informed that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, very truthful words, his truthful words, uh, honesty, kind manners, and so on. Who went together with uh, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to Syria? Who informed this information to Khadija? Who? Any name mentioned mention that? No. Yeah, my Sarah. My Sarah mentioned about the uh, mention about the. Uh, behavior of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he was this, this and that. So Khadija was so impressed with him then, then she married with him. Men. Men. Yeah. Yeah. Nowadays people yeah because uh, Hamza also is uh, because Tamar Buta he see Maisara. There are many names uh, with Tamar Buta. Talha Talha. Ah, uh, so it's men. Oh, okay. Have you come across Anis? Anis. Anis. Anis is male. Anis. 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 Anis is female. Uh, Anis. But yeah. But Malay, in Malay, they call Anis also for the female. Yeah. Ah. So, female should be Hanisa. Huh? Female should be Hanisa. Hanisa, yeah. Okay. Then the, he get married with uh, Khadija. Okay. Then he returned to Hamaka. Khadija uh, realized the profit of the business increase and so on. So, all that things you already know, right? Any question on that? Before we go to the other issue about... Uh, anything? The time is 10 plus already. Ah. We stop until here, until the marriage of the Khadija. Okay? Uh, uh, I think no, that... Her age. Yeah, there is a dispute also about the age. Um, because, uh, because why? Because she got, 
she got birth for many children, right? How many of them? Six, right? Except Ibrahim, son of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Son of uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ibrahim is got from who is the mother? Imra'ah min Kiptia, Maryam Kiptia from the Egypt, right? Uh, uh, but none other, none of the wives got children from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam except Khadija, and all of them died. Died early. Uh, the other one is uh, the Egyptian uh, wife, Al -Qib they call it Al Qibtiya, Maryam Al Qibtiya. Uh, uh, Maria Al Qibtiya. Maria, Maria. Maria Al Qibtiya, not Maryam. Uh, Huh? Okay. She what? Yes, yes. She was the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But she don't have any children. Strange, huh? Strange, right? How come she don't have any children? She was married to a very young age. <laughs> Khadija was very... So your question, uh, there is a dispute. Uh, so, if we look, the normal, uh, uh, normally people say, uh, the, in, the, in the historical information mentioned about 40 years, Khadija was 40 years, but is that in, during 40 years can get many children? I don't know. Allah wa Allah. Maybe those times ladies different, right? Huh? Yeah. Okay, no, no, because of that, that thing, some scholars say it is not 40 years when she got married with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, much, must be much earlier. But she was married before that? Yes, she was married with someone else. Twice. Huh? Twice. Huh? Twice in his children. I don't know how many times. <laughs> we need to search, search for the narration of the hadith of the Prophet She brought the circumcision. Huh? No shadow. Shadow. Yeah. Uh, we need to search for that. I don't think so. He's normal man. In 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 this bio, biographical Rahikul Mahtum didn't mention about that one, right? Not mentioned. So as we told you last time, that Rahikul Mahtum is the most authentic. Uh, uh, what is that? Narrations. Okay, he already selected. Uh, so, uh, maybe there are some other information, but I didn't come across particularly in, in hadith or, or something, reliable sources. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's true. The cloud. Even the Bahira, when we talk about the Bahira, so he saw the, the clouds. Is, uh, when he went back, we studied the Kaaba when he was too late. The, yeah, the cloud also, there was another cloud. Yeah, cloud is very common. Is it all the time? Um, <laughs> those are the information we have, we know, this time, this time. Is it all the time? We don't have any information, right? Uh, some, maybe some of the times, maybe during the uh, very hot days, whatever, I don't know, Allah Alam. Yeah. But there was... Uh, those things happen. Okay, any other things? Yeah, I, I think it's not all the time because remember one of the things uh, he did when he was fasting and he put water over his head because it was very, very hot day. And uh -huh. So if he was shaded by the cloud, he wouldn't have felt that. Oh. Heat and, yeah. I mean, this is why I didn't. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe. 
maybe Allah alam. Okay, so inshallah in the next uh, session we will talk about the rebuilding. Uh, this is very important also. Rebuilding of Al Kaaba and the uh, arbitration issue. Uh, so I hope you can read first before you come, then we will try to discuss. Because uh, when it was. No, I didn't come across anything about that one. That's maybe you know this this when we talk about the professional there are many fake 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 information. You know, the one we know that he went alone for uh, almost about two years plus, right? Uh, then the, uh, after those two years plus, he come back and then uh, he was uh, uh, telling what happened to the uh, Khadija, right? But I, I didn't come across anything, that kind of information. <laughs> so like, nice to uh, but then there was uh, recently I heard from another teacher uh -huh. he, that he came down and the other day he came down and get the food supply uh, maybe possible yeah. we don't have all those details uh, so that's the things okay so so many fake news <laughs> yeah so many so that's why we when we so many, so many fake things. Thirteen? Yeah, there are some narrations saying like that. But at the same time, he was uh, with uh, eleven. Uh, no, nine. Nine. Yeah. Uh, there, there are all those uh, information. Uh, sometimes not true, lah. So eleven is confirmed. Yeah. Huh? Divorce. Who oh, he was? He didn't divorce anyone. Huh? No divorce. He married. Mm. So, any other question? No. If no, we stop here. Thank you very much for your patience, and uh, we hope uh, in the next class we will discuss more on this one. Uh, thank you. Uh, may Allah bless all of us, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.